Hi there YouTubers and welcome to another servicing video from SORT 6233 the Society for the Restoration of Trains and tonight's project is going to be this little grapher and it's one of the job lot of nine I got at New Year I've allocated it job number 54 uh, apparently a known runner so let's just have a wee look at it a uh, couplers missing at the front, but buffers intact. Uh, wheels okay with the corn rods. Uh, these are f f uh, rotating freely, which I would not expect. Um, so, what else have we got? Buffers uh, okay at the back, and couplers. Although that coupler is not free. Um, I have a horrible suspicion about this one. So let me just find my little screwdriver and we'll get the head off and we'll see what's happening. Usually this screw at the front holds a whole assembly. So we'll take that one out, it should be the long one, yep. And then the whole chassis should come out to lift up um, and well we can see what the problem here is no armature and one pole missing so that ain't going to help obviously I need brushes in here Probably, no, it's, it's probably springs as well. A couple of motor poles, maybe a new cradle. So I think this is a scrapper. <laughs> I've already dismantled it and I'm quite agitated a wee bit because when I opened it up this is what I found. No motor, no armature and one of the pole pieces being taken out and I don't really understand how people can go to the bother of dismantling something like this, taking bits out and then put it all back up together again. And then obviously trying to flog it as a spares are repaired because it doesn't work. Anyway, I'm up for the challenge. I've worked on a few of these 94XXs and I think I might have a spare armature. I certainly get a pole piece um, and I've got brushes and springs. So I'm going to get all the bits I need and I'll come right back as soon as I've got that far. Well, I've gathered up um, the pieces. I have here an armature, a spare pole piece. Uh, also in here I've got spare brushes, springs and the couplers. And another thing I noticed is this is the contact plate. Um, but you can see the contact arms are missing. Well, I happen to have a spare in my box of 94XX. So at least I think I've now got enough to reconstruct this little 94XX. Um, it's needing a little bit of a clean, still needing a chimney but I think I can get that from BR lines no problem. Um, so I'm just going to put, put this bit aside clean it up later on, it should, if I just take my label off, say GWR on the side, I'm going to try and find some decals for that and get this up into the better state than it was before. That's my aim. So let's see how this goes when I start to reconstruct the local. 
I found from experience it was actually easier to reconstruct the base first and then put the motor on top. That's the bottom plate on, the wheels in place and they almost quarter themselves when you put the drive, uh, the con rod on. Um, so my next task will be to try and assemble the upper um, cradle for the armature. That seems to run pretty freely, I think there's something got there, yep, a little spring in there. And that runs pretty freely, oops, there we go. So, first part out of the way. Assembling the upper uh, cradle, um, I'm also going to need some bearings for the armature. And I have a pair of bearings, I have that, there we go, a pair of bearings from Bob down at BR Lines. been restricted by the pole piece for the time being and now to fit this pole piece. The rivets here have been damaged so I'm not sure how well this is going to fit. But I might just manage to get that to put in. And there we go. Will actually allow the armature to rotate fairly freely. Nope, something has gone askew with this. Well, the reason for the stickiness was just in here. There was a rough spot. It actually looked as if someone had put something in there to dig it out, or maybe the whole piece caught on it was coming out. I'm not quite sure, but now that's good there. So let me fit the other pole piece. Push it into place, and the armature still looks free, and now to apply the magnet. And we should have a free running armature. Look at that, yeah. Excellent, so we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Okay, um, do you know what I just forgot? Remember that I've forgotten. I've forgotten that I've remembered I've forgotten this. And that is, I have not installed the lower brush assembly. Which means I need to take all of this off and start again. Right, let me get back to you. I'm almost ready to put the upper cradle onto the main chassis. Before I do so, I have to fit the brush assembly in here. Um, you probably may be aware, and if you're not, well hopefully this will help you, that there are four pieces to the brush assembly. Uh, there is a main clip, capillary tube, there is the brush spring, and a brush itself, which I have two in here. The capillary tube fit first and it directs the brush onto the commutator. Then the brush is seated 
One ticket packet open that is. Just talk among yourselves for a few minutes. I'm just getting this open. And I'm going to take out the brush. And so there, just a bit of carbon rod. And it will just sit quite neatly in there. There's not a lot of leeway. Once it's in, it sits. Oops. Quite cold today, so my fingers are not working at 100% efficiency. And it sits down there. The spring sits in the capillary tube also. Be careful, don't give it too much pressure or it'll come out and dear knows where it'll end up. And the clip sits over the assembly, trying to get my fingers out of the way. And that presses the spring onto the brush, onto the commutator. Okay. Like so. I have to install the... the spring and the brush. And this is where it all goes wrong, isn't it? That one here. Right, this is all a load of rubbish. Having rethought my strategy, I've now constructed the main body with the armature, spring assemblies in, and brushes, and I'm now in a position where I can now test to make sure that this works. So this is my little tester I built over the holiday, and you can see as I apply this it did work yeah there we go and if I just reverse the direction so I have got a running armature and again, it puzzles me why people do this. So, let's see if we can get the wheel assembly in. Making sure that the wheels are in the right orientation. And you certainly check that by looking at these pips above the axle positions. These little pips should be pointing upwards as the locomotive is running. So, in here, like so. Then the other two wheel assemblies in there. And I'm going to fit the base plate before I hook up the, um, the con rods. Base plate can, at a push, fit both ways, but it should go, uh, I think, this way. I will check that. Yes, there is um, a screw that needs to go through here, Oops. which brings the power from the positive uh, rail up to the other end of the armature, and then that's connected to the positive pole. So I will slip one end of the, the contact plate into place, oh, make sure it's the right way around. This slips in there. And I usually tend to feed the contact arms behind the wheel using my craft knife because it's nice and thin. In there. That's it there, now hold it correctly and try and ease contact arms on this side. Being careful that I don't release the contact arms which I've already fitted and in fact that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hold the assembly together with this 
screw that fits at the rear of the assembly. Oops, I'm picking up all kinds of things on my screwdriver. And that holds the assembly together. And now I can fit the coin rods. Gentle pressure to open up spacing and that should just slide over there and similarly at this side you don't want to make too much pressure otherwise you'll bend the coin rod and it will start to come out of position on the other side lining up the coin rods Get one to slide in, and then the other one. Oops. At this point, of course, this upper cradle is only fixed with a little clip at this end and needs to be held in place with a screw. And the screw is still in position in the original base plate. It's a 10BA, so it's quite thin, but it's longer than some of the others, slides in there and the 10BA fits in place. Now when this is fully assembled there will be a lead running from here so that's something else I realise has just gone missing and there's usually a lead which runs from here to this positive pole. Let me take this bit of wire out. So as I said, the lead goes from here to here. Um, I think again I may have one somewhere. So I'll just have a wee quick look in my spares box. And I'll be back very shortly. This wire is normally a single strand a wire in a sleeving, but I didn't have any, so I've just run a little very thin multi strand wire. Um, and everything looks complete. Um, I still have the couplers to fit, but I'll do that later on. And now for the moment of test. So I've got my little power clip and apply to the contact plates on each side. And look at that. I wonder how long it's been since this one has run. It's something I'm always amazed at is how long have machines been out of action before they get rescued. So now I'm going to try it from the wheels themselves. And you can see that it's trying to work there. I might need to clean those wheels. But it's definitely trying to work. So the next stage would be onto my rolling road. I'm going to turn up the power and see if we get any reaction. And there you go. Come on, baby. Come on. Here we are. Contact through my rolling road is not the best, but if I just encourage it, we should maybe get a reaction. Oops. It's nearly, yeah, definitely something trying to happen. Come on, baby. Trying to work. There we go, I think it just needed a little bit of confidence and a bit of encouragement. And I think it will definitely need a bit of running in because it's been out of action for so long. 
So I'm going to take the power down and reverse the direction and see if it will go unaided. It's trying to, so I'm going to reverse again. And now it still needs a little bit of encouragement, I think. It's, it's, yeah, it's nearly there, isn't it? It's nearly there. If I can get it to run, I can put it on, on test for a while. Get it to run in. I think that's what it needs. Now, the only other thing I can think of, and that has occurred to me, is I wonder if the corn rods are in the right side. Um, the spacing between the wheels looks the same, but I wonder if the corn rods... No, that would stop. No, I think that would be a different type of problem we'd get. Although, I might just try it, but I'm kind of wondering if this little bobble should be behind the main drive wheel or in front of it. Yes, that might be that might be something worth looking at. But I don't think there's anything really major. So I think I will reverse the wheels and just put them on the opposite sides. Just in case there is that slight difference. Let's see if this has made any difference. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that, eh? So, let's try it in reverse. Oh, yes. I wouldn't do that previously. Look at that. So, I, I don't know if that's just coincidence or what. Maybe so the oil seep through. I don't know. But, it didn't do that before. I didn't do that before. That's looking good, isn't it? So my little battered and bruised 94 XX is coming in with no motor and a whole lot of other problems with it. I just sort of pokes it into life. I'm really pleased with that. You know when I first saw it I was really was disgusted and almost just putting it into scrap bin. What? I think I've resurrected up very well. That's nice. That was nice. Look at that, no problem at all, both directions. Right, let's get the coupler fitted and then get body on and we'll uh, let it go and test. I think we'll need to run in for about an hour, so. Let's get started on this bit. For this particular model, the couplers are what I call the old style Graham Farish. They've got a built in spring part and a little uh, locating loop which fits inside the, uh, the lower chassis. Which means I need to remove this base plate once more. Uh, so I'll do so and I'll let you see how they're fitted in. Move the base plate. Oh, I also need to move the 10BA screw. But that's okay, you can get quite good at this now. Move the base plate. And each end, you'll see a little pin and so the various couplers go in with the spring pointing as it went down the way. Uh, and of course the thing is I've now got to fit these in. And then fit the base plate on at the same time. Okay, so I'll do that and I'll come back when I've finished. I've got my little 94X running really smoothly. I'm just going to change the direction of the power again. And you can see it starts off by itself and no problem whatsoever. You also notice I've fitted couplers at the rear and at the front. And these are the, new, the old style 
parish couples and when I put them in they wouldn't actually fit very well and then I discovered why let me try and bring this in this is the old base plate and at this end here you can see this little pit when this fits onto the chassis the coupler is held in place by that little pit but in this base plate which I've got on these are not available because it's the other type of coupler it's made for so there are two different base plates with two obviously production dates of machine so I've modified this base plate simply by installing a little sticky pad courtesy of my wife's craft room let's take one of each at the front and the rear and that's held the couplers in place they're not perfect um, but I would need a new base plate to get it working properly so that's it running there I'm just going to leave that for a few seconds where I'll have a look at one last problem with this and that is the body it's in good condition but it's missing the chimney pot uh, missing the decals um, and so it needs a good clean up as well but in my box I have this this is another body shell with reasonable looking decals at the side and on the other side and it has the brass chimney pot and the um, bit in the middle, the funnel pot as well. So I'm just going to simply replace the body shell. And I'm kind of reminded of Trigger's broom from Only Fools and Horses. Which funny enough I saw just a few days ago where he had the same broom for almost 20 years only replacing the handle 17 times and the head about 14 times but that room stood in good stead uh, so this is almost like the same idea I've got my little 94X I've put in a replacement armature uh, replacement pole pieces replacement buffers uh, and now I'm going to replace the body shell but it's the same little 94xx that I got before well that's what I'm going to say anyway so let me just get all this together get it hooked up in the track put a little rake of uh, wagons or something behind it and let's see what it works like 94 double x running quite happily around the test track uh, behind it is uh, Lima, a uh, British Rail coach, I'm still not used to which category it is, but that seems to be running pretty nicely, coming round the back. So, out of my nine locals, I've got a couple running already, and um, so I'm going to put that one to bed. I'll let it run for about an hour or so just to run it in um, but yeah that was pretty good so I hope the, the rest of them don't all turn out to be as bad I've got plans to do a couple more over the next few days so keep looking keep watching YouTube um, just incidentally the one that's overtaking it is a lifelike and it's a uh, Cal train F40 diesel which I've just got fixed as well so you might see that one on YouTube very soon too so here's my little 94XX running round quite happily uh, you have to manipulate the couplers they don't quite fit very well but that's because of that base plate but I'm sure maybe later sometime in the future I can get that updated Okay folks, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that, um, a lot of problems with it, but it got there in the end. Uh, if you like, engage, 
Right, servicing, keep watching and you never know. If you could subscribe then you'll be updated whenever I produce a new video. Hopefully you'll comment and perhaps even give me a thumbs up. So I'll leave you just watching this running around again and uh, just take care. Bye for now. Let's see.